Hello and welcome my friends. I bring to you again the trios of homeopathy. I've shared with you part 1 and 2 and few more very interesting trios which can help you in your clinical practice. I'll start off with Tyler's trio of ptosis. Tyler's trio of ptosis or drooping of the eyelids. And you understand ptosis is a neur neurological condition where there is drooping of the eyelids and Tyler, Margaret Tyler, famous English homeopath mentions Causticum, Gelsemium and Sepia as her trio of ptosis. Now when you consider the comparative materia medica of these remedies, you have to understand, let's start off with Sepia. In Sepia, one of the key factors is stasis. So there is stasis of circulation, there is stasis in her life, she feels indifferent, indifferent to her household activities, domestic indifference, occupational indifference at her work as well and similarly that stasis reflected even in her eyes is drooping of the eyelid stasis in a pelvic musculature there is you try and prolapse so you'll find that stasis in sepia which is drooping of the eyelids in a chilly woman in a menopausal woman who has menopausal headaches with hair fall with scanty menses with an irritable indifferent constitution that's where sepia is indicated when we come to gelsemium my friends gelsemium is also a top neurological remedy you have to understand for gelsemium, there are 4D and the H and the T. Dull, dizzy, drowsy, debility. So lots of dizziness, drowsiness, debility with heaviness and tremor. So the lids are very heavy. She's unable to keep them open. So lots of heaviness of the eyelids along with tremor of the muscles. Many times in gelsemium, what you can find that it's a good clinical tip and I want you to try this. You know, the patient had been wearing glasses for time and he has changed the glasses. He feels he, his, his refraction, his vision was not clear. So he changed the glasses. And even after changing the glasses, his vision is not correct. And gelsemium is a remedy which corrects the blurring, which corrects the discomfort in the eyes, even after accurately adjusted glasses. If you look in Borike's eye section, you'll find this mention that the patient has changed his spectacles quite a few times, but still his muscles of accommodation not being able to adjust and your gelsemium will correct that discomfort, will correct that blurring after accurately adjusted, even after accurately adjusted glasses. Now with gelsemium stosis, you can find many times a lot of heaviness in the eyes, as I mentioned, heaviness in the head. Gelsemium can have an occipital headache, which starts from the back, goes to the front, and there's a band-like sensation in the head. He does like this better by pressure, better by urination, you can find with gelsemium. And with the ptosis, you'll find with gelsemium many times, that there is lethargy, there is indifference, all the discernings are lethargied in case of gelsemium with a typical, typical sun aggravation which is very important for your gelsemium. And with these neurological symptoms, with the tremor, you find gelsemium wants to be alone. Even if the person next to him is silent, he wants to be completely alone and that is your gelsemium. What happens many times with the ptosis, with the eye symptoms in gelsemium? You can find squint, strabismus. Burnett mentions it's a top remedy for strabismus. Along with that, you can many times find diplopy or double vision in gelsemium as well, which is quite classical. We come to the third remedy in this list is causticum. What happens in causticum? The drooping of the eyelids many times can start after a cold exposure. So cold air exposure and that causes a paralysis of the ocular muscles. And you have to understand causticum is primarily a right-sided remedy. So the drooping is also many times right-sided in causticum. Also in causticum, as it's a nerve remedy, along with the paralysis, you can find a lot of tendinous contractures. So there's contraction of the muscles, contraction of the extremities. And you know, in causticum, the triad or triad of symptoms is burning, rawness and soreness. So burning, raw and sore always goes hand in hand for causticum. Another aspect of it, as there's a physical etiology, which can start after a cold exposure in causticum, but there's an emotional etiology as well. What happens after a sh grief, after a shock, or after a disappointment, causticum can develop neuroparalytic symptoms. There's a wonderful line in Alan's keynotes for causticum. Disturbed functional activity of the brain and the spinal cord after exhausting disease or severe mental shock. So the mother had a shock during her pregnancy, had a major grief during her pregnancy. It was an unwanted pregnancy. And as a consequence of that, the child develops neuroparalytic symptoms, which are right-sided. 
and ptosis can be one of them because causticum is also a remedy for single paralysis muscle paralysis of single parts so the ptosis the tongues the vocal cord the single parts get paralyzed and primarily as i mentioned it's right sided so that's my friends the Tylert's trio of ptosis And whenever you're prescribing for ptosis neurological conditions, make sure you always use the higher potencies, 200C, 1M, 10M, before thinking even of changing the remedy. We come to back to Nash again and Nash's trio where expectoration is profuse and stringy. This is again we back to Nash, Nash's trio of expectoration where it's profuse and stringy. We have three wonderful remedies in this list is calibichromicum we have hydrastis and we have coccus cacti calibichromicum hydrastis coccus cacti let's start with calibic you understand calibic is a syphilitic kelly a hot kelly who is a syphilitic kelly now if you consider the syphilitic symptoms of kelly in especially in relation with the expectoration Many times you will find a perforated nasal septum in Calibic, syphilitic destruction. Many times in Calibic, you will find there is discharge of plugs, clinkers, so raw crust, crust from the nose, which leaves the raw surface inside the nostril. So the inside of the nostril gets raw, destructed, corroded, syphilitic again. And many times you can find a very bad smell from the nose, very bad smell with the expectoration, very fetid smell. Again, that is syphilitic. So syphilitic Kelly where the expectoration is profuse and stringy. Now, even before you start, you have to understand whenever you come across a stringy discharge, remember that's a syphilitic miasm. So any condition where you find a stringy discharge, remember it's a feature of the syphilitic miasm. Now with Kelly Bake, you have to understand the sphere of action here. One, it affects the frontal sinus, frontal maxillary sinus, it affects that. Many times from these sinuses, there is the discharge comes out and that is thick yellowish green or greenish yellow stringy and very many times offensive for calibic often you will find in calibic post nasal dripping so there is dripping from the back of the nose into the oral cavity you can find in calibic often the uvula is very edematous bladder like so much swollen that it looks like a fluid filled sac apis rostox can also have that bladder like swelling of the uvula and also in calibic and also what is important for calibic that you know you can have an affinity mostly for the sinuses which is characteristic it is also a remedy for snuffles in fat chubby babies calibic can be very fat and chubby all kelly's are mostly chubby except kelly iod but with calibic chubby babies who are having constant snuffles that's very important very important for calibic so a syphilitic kelly where you have destructive manifestations where you have an offensive stringy discharge and that is very important for your kelly bake the second remedy in this list which is important is hydrastis now when you try to understand hydrastis you have to understand there are three common symptoms in hydrastis one you'll find debility second you will find emaciation and thirdly you will find loss of appetite so debility in old persons so old persons who are completely exhausted emaciation they're cachectic maybe with malignant conditions maybe post cancerous uh, therapy conditions or even in benign state they're emaciated they're cachectic and loss of appetite so weak digestion digestion is very poor they don't like to eat at all and therefore you find an empty all gone sensation in hydrastis so this is the triad of common symptoms in graphitis but when they are together it becomes a symptom complex and it is then a characteristic for hydrastis and so if you think the common name of hydrastis is golden seal so the color of discharges of hydrastis is golden yellow and with the golden yellow discharge in hydrastis you'll find the nasal discharge the post nasal dripping is thick golden yellow and stringy remember in case of calibic that's a comparison compared to metro medica Calibic can be greenish yellow and offensive, but here in case of hydrasis, typically yellow, no greenish aspect here. Typically yellow, no, not much smell because the doctrine of signature, the color is golden sea. So old persons, exhausted persons who feel suffocated when lying on the left side 
and who have weak digestion, who have loss of appetite with an empty organ sensation and who are cachectic with a yellow stringy discharge will bring to your mind Hydrastis canadensis. And lastly in this list, one of my very, very useful remedies, I've used it in many times in my practice is Coccus cacti. <coughs> So there is always a mucus in the throat, a white, tough, stringy mucus in the throat. There is a sensation of crumbs in the throat, tickling in the throat. They try to bring it out. This mucus is strangling me. I am strangled by the mucus. <coughs> and I bring out this tough, viscid, white, stringy mucus only by vomiting. So I vomit to expel this stringy mucus. And whenever I brush my teeth, that brings on the cough and that is coccus cacti. Wonderful in acutes, wonderful in chronics where you have a tough viscid white mucus. Remember it's a more a white discharge in coccus cacti which strangles me. The mucus is strangulating me and I am feeling a tickling, a crumb like sensation. I try to bring it out, I cannot because it is stuck in my throat. So I, uh, I vomit it out and then only the mucus comes out and that's very classical for your coccus cacti. So, a remedy where you have yellowish green offensive discharge that's calibic a remedy where you have typically yellow stringy discharge that's hydrastis and it's white viscid stringy and difficult to bring it out that's your calibic that's your coccus cacti so again these remedies can prescribed in 30 c 200 c with very very good results with the expectoration The third one in this group is a very interesting group is trio of infrascapular pains. Trio of infrascapular pains again by Nash. So pain under the scapula or the shoulder blade. You have obviously chelidonium here. There are two chenopodiums here. Chenopodium. One is Chenopodium antihelminthicum and the other is Chenopodium glaucum or glaucae. Now this starts with the two Chenopodium brothers. Chenopodium antihelminthicum. You see uh, in the name you find antihelminth which means it's a worm killer. So hookworm, roundworm, different types of worm infestations are handled with Chenopodium. So, Infrascapular pains with worm infestation, that is wonderful area for Chenopodium. The second area of Chenopodium, it is also neurological medicine and specially hemiplegia, aphasia, so right sided hemiplegia, right sided aphasia, so post cerebral stroke, post cerebral thrombosis when there is a right sided paralysis. But more importantly for Chenopodium antihelminthicum, you will have hearing weakness or hearing related symptoms in case of Chenopodium. Artie Cooper calls for Chenopodium, a very interesting word, cerebral deafness. What is cerebral deafness? Many times for Chenopodium what happens? Voice hearing is very poor, they cannot hear voices, they cannot hear human conversations, but watch hearing is good, tuck, 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 tuck. So small, slight sounds they can hear it, watch hearing is good, but voice hearing is bad. Human voice they cannot hear it properly. but they are sensitive to sounds. So, cerebral deafness by R.T. Cooper means that watch hearing is good, but voice hearing is bad. So, you can consider for Chenopodium antihelminthicum infrascapular pains with worm infestation. You can consider for Chenopodium antihelminthicum infrascapular pains with right sided hemiplegia, aphasia, and a cerebral deafness. And the cerebral deafness is where you cannot hear the human voice but you get sensitive to sounds and for Chenopodium antihelminthicum as I mentioned is right sided hemiplegia and even the infrascapular pains is also right sided. We come to the another Chenopodium brother is Chenopodium glaucum or glaucae. Chenopodium glaucae is a, pain, is a remedy for left sided infrascapular pains. So left sided infrascapular pains, pain under the inferior angle of the left scapula. Along with that, you can find many times in Chenopodium glaucum, 
allergic rhinitis like symptoms so a lot of sneezing burning in the nostrils burning in and itching in the nasal septum that can be found in chenopodium glaucum but what is very interesting for chenopodium it's a single remedy in the metro medica for toothache better by perspiration if ever you find it remember that's your only remedy chenopodium glaucum toothache better by perspiration if you consider general better by perspiration you have that in atrium you have that in aconite sorinum eupatorium perfoliatum where these are general remedies better by perspiration but if you consider specifically toothache better by sweat when a warm sweat breaks out that's your chenopodium glaucum and lastly i'm sure you know about chelidonium chelidonium is for pain again under the right scapula but you see the comparative metro medical chenopodium is either with worm infestation or with neurological hemiplegia whereas chelidonium is primarily with a hepatic derangement with a gallbladder derangement so right sided infrascapular pains when it is dependent on the hepatobiliary derangement that's chelidonium you know the common areas of chelidonium eating will make them better they crave for hot food and drinks it's almost boiling their stomach will not tolerate it and with the right sided infrascapular pains you can find either a constipated chelidonium or a diarrheic chelidonium when it's a constipated chelidonium you'll find ball like stools sheep dung like stools when it's a diarrheic chelidonium you'll find clay colored stools which float in water so a chelidonium will have a right sided infrascapular pains with hepatobiliary derangement and you know with chelidonium there can be jaundice the entire skin is yellow even the tongue is coated yellow with imprint of teeth so and eating will make chelidonium always always better so you can prescribe these remedies in 63200c with chenopodium as there is a, if there is a neurological component go with 1m and many times you can help in cases where hearing is affected post cva with chenopodium anti helminthicum fourth one in this list another very interesting one by nash glandular affections where it is stony hard glandular affection where it is stony hard and there's a tendency towards cancerous it's a cancerous tendency is there glandular affection which is stony hard and there is a cancerous tendency which is there you have in carbo animalis you have bromium and you have conium in this list again a wonderful trio by nash very very important practically as well glandular affections where it is stony hard and there is a cancerous tendency carbo animalis bromium conium maculatum let's start with carbo animalis a very underrated medicine my friends it's not often used in practice but with carbo animalis you have to understand there is a scrofulous component there is a venous component so if you understand the two aspects there is a scrofulous component and there is a venous component now if you understand the scrofulous component that's where the gland affection comes so if you consider hard glands indurated glands where there is burning pains lancinating pain cutting pain especially right sided breast tumors so breast tumors which is right sided any glandular affections which are stony hard which are right sided with burning cutting pains think of carbo animalis also you have to understand venous aspect here if you consider conditions where there is sluggish circulation slow circulation old persons with feeble circulation where you will find varicose veins varicose ulcers sometimes it becomes ulcerous conditions where there is copper color eruption spongy ulcers varicose ulcers in those cases your carbo animalis will do wonders distended veins reynolds disease phlebitis where the veins are blue where the skin is turning black where carbo animalis will help and with that emotionally they don't want to meet anybody they want to be alone they avoid conversation they're sad they're reflective think of carbo animalis so in in the geriatric age group with hard indurated glands specially right sided with burning lancinating pain sometimes offensive discharges all carbon carbons specially carbo veg carbo animalis have offensive discharges and a venous constitution where you can have phlebitis varicose veins varicose ulcers poor sluggish circulation feeble circulation with bluishness or blackishness of the skin perhaps turning into ulcerative conditions like spongy ulcers you can think of carbo animalis in practice as the vitality is low it's always preferable to use a lower potency 30c is preferable 
for your carboanimalis. We come to bromium next. Bromium is like carboanimalis was more for right sided glands, bromium is more for left sided glands. Bromium's affinity is here more, lower jaw, throat. So you can find left sided mumps in bromium. You can find left sided some mandibular enlargement in bromium. Many times left sided breast tumors in bromium as well. With all these tumors, with all these glands, remember there is a strong touch aggravation and there is a jar aggravation. So if you have a testicular tumor, it is worse from jarring. If you have a breast tumor, there is stitching pains, shooting pains when you touch the breast tumor, left sided again. And bromium helps in these modalities with touch aggravation, jar aggravation, which is very, very important. Remember bromium's appearance is a typical tubercular appearance. Why tubercular appearance? If you think of your phosphorus, if you think of your tuberculinum, fair, delicate skin, light blue eyes, blonde, scrofulous girls. So they are attractive, they're good looking. And with that good looking, attractive persona, you have these glandular indurations. You can think of your bromium in practice. I said, shared it's also tubercular remedy as top remedy for dust allergies. You know, bromium is a sailor's asthma. When they go to the sea, they do not have asthmatic symptoms. When they come to the shore, the dust, the sand flares up the asthma. So that's also important for bromium. A tubercular remedy with glandular induration, which tends to cancer, especially left-sided, with a jar and a touch aggravation. My friends, conium maculatum needs no introduction for glands. Glands, stony hard, cancerous tendency, you'll find conium is always indicated. And if you see, there are only few remedies in the Metromedica which mentions in his discussion it says a cancerous diathesis so there's a tendency to go towards cancer in conium mac the etiological factors are important it could be after a blow after an injury so injury to the breast injury to the testes results in glandular induration it could be as a result of suppressed sexual desire so old maids and bachelors no sexual contact glands can be affected it can be as a result of suppressed menses lots of oral contraceptives lots of hrt suppressed your menses you're now ovarian cysts, you're now down with breast tumors. So these are few etiological factors. Could be an injury, could be suppressed sexual desire, could be suppressed menses iatrogenically. And with conium, if you consider the breast affinity, you'll find in conium there is stitches in the breast, stitches in the nipple. They want to press the breast with the hand. And this better by pressure is a feature of all psychotic remedies. Conium being a top psychotic, they want better by pressure. And also, the pain in conium is before and during your periods. Before menses, during menses, the breasts swell up, breasts become tender. Like Lacan, like Mercurius, like Calcarea, like Phytolacca. The breasts become tender before and during the periods, which is very important for your conium maculatum. Emotionally, they will be indifferent. They do not like to interact. The memory is dwindling, senile dementia. Kent mentions the mind and body shutting down together. So mental paralysis, mental imbecility, as well as physical they get neurological symptoms with tremors, with ascending paralysis in conium. 200 C1M, if there is neurological component to add to that in conium. And the last in this list to finish up is Nash's trio, where the expectoration is profuse. Most of the trio today I mentioned is by Nash, only the Tyler's trio of Tosis is there. Nash's trio where expectoration is profuse. Now I have to compare these three remedies together because there are areas of comparison. You have Stanum Metallicum, Stanum Met, you have Kelly Iod. Kelly Hydro Iod or Kelly Iod and you have Sanguinaria Canadensis. Three very interesting remedies mentioned by Nash for expectoration is profuse. Stanum Met, Kelly Iod, Sanguinaria Canadensis. Now with Stanum Met, if you consider, we'll, let's start off with location. Any location for any of these? With Sankan, remember it's a right sided remedy, so right lung is affected. So mostly right lung is affected in case of Sankan, not so the case with Kelliard or Stanum. With Kelliard, the location which is important is sinus. If you see Borike's introduction of Kelliard, Borike mentions the profuse watery acrid coriza and pain in the frontal sinus is a guiding symptom. So profuse 
watery acrid coryza. So there's an acrid coryza from the nose and there is pain in the frontal sinus and that is classical for your uh, Kaliod, which is very very important. With standard met, there is no particular location as such. If you consider sensations for each of the remedy, with standard met, there is an empty all gone sensation. So chest feels empty, there is all gone sensation. It's so weak that they can hardly talk. Patient will tell you that I cannot talk because my chest is so weak. Kelly iod as it's a Kelly, there will be stitching pains in the chest. So stitching pains either with the sinus or even with the chest symptoms there is stitching pains in case of Kelly iod. And with sanguinaria, one of the characters is lot of burning, burning as if there is a hot steam coming from the chest, lot of burning sensation in sanguinaria canadensis, primarily right sided but lot of burning sensation and that is very classical for Sankan. If we consider the modalities for each of the remedies, Stanam as I mentioned, you know the effort to speak aggravates, so talking, singing, that will aggravate Stanam. Even lying on the right side, that's an important aggravation for Stanam, lying on right side. So that effort to speak, effort to sing is troublesome for Stanam. With Kelly Iod, what's important? It has Kelly modalities, so aggravation rest, better by movement. So when they have the sinus pains with that expectoration, rest aggravates them, movement makes them better. Heat will aggravate Kelly iod. Why heat aggravates? Because it is a combination with Kelly and iodum and iodum has a heat aggravation. They cannot bear in to stay in a warm room and that's important for Kelly iod. With Sankan, which is most important, is you have to remember for Sankan, it is a cough of gastric origin. As it is a cough of gastric origin or symptoms of gastric origin, they feel better by expectoration. So the asthma in Sankan is better by eructation, I'm sorry, better by eructation as that asthma is dependent on gastric disorders. So your sanguinaria will always feel better by eructation. Now if you come to the most important factor, what is the expectoration in each of the remedies? For standard met, the expectoration is greenish, sweetish expectoration. So you can find in standard met a uh, green and sweet expectoration the taste is sweet in case of Kelly iod it's also a greenish expectoration you have to understand all iodum group of remedies are a tuber a tubercular remedies there can be Kelly iod is primarily i will say trimiasmatic because it has tubercular symptoms it has psychotic as syphilitic symptoms as well but generally iodum group of remedies have a tubercular component and tubercular discharges are either bloody or green so with Kelly iod you have a greenish expectoration as well which is also quite important and with sankan remember as a hemorrhagic remedy you'll find with sankan is a rusty sputum it has a bloody appearance rusty sputum in sankan you see we did kelly big earlier on kelly big was more a syphilitic kelly so in kelly big it was a stringy yellowish green offensive discharge whereas kelly iod is more a tubercular kelly where it's more a greenish discharge which is important to understand the difference in such aspects Again, stanum, there is a lot of tuberculosis in stanum. That's why you see again the greenish expectoration in stanum as well because of the tuberculosis. So, these are your Nash's trio where the expectoration is profuse. And it's important to understand these remedies in practice. I always try and give importance to these trios because, you know, many times when you're in a busy clinic, you try and remember what are the top three and that's how Nash used to do it. Top three which can come up with, you see a gland, it's hard, you'll think of carbonimal as bromium, conium and then you'll try to differentiate and many times you can come up with a remedy based on these indications. When you see the discharge is string, you'll think of calibic, hydrastis, coccus. If it's yellowish green, calibic. If it's yellow, hydrastis, it's white, then coccus cacti. So it's very useful for comparison in your clinical practice as well. And that's why I share with you very, very common practical topics. Thank you very much.